Oh there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. I've been um, scratching around looking for more ideas for SolidWorks tutorials. Um, couldn't come up with anything, so I um, I had a look through my folder and I've got several several tutorial projects that I've started and sort of got halfway through and, and haven't finished. So I thought I'd do something else. I sat down with my notepad and wrote out a whole lot of um, sort of tricks and tips and uh, what have you that I thought might be useful for people, um, industrial designers, and they're using SolidWorks. So I've um, I've put it together into a PowerPoint, and I'll um, I'll put this file on my um, in the description of this video as well, so you can download it if you find anything useful. So I'll just scroll through this quickly. So mirror bodies, not features. Um, why would you want to do that? Well, your mirror mirror features. Seems very unstable. Same with um, mirroring sketch entities within a sketch. So I predominantly use mirror, mirror bodies, um, insert pattern mirror mirror body. Um, you can even mirror a sketch if you've got a closed sketch section. You can uh, make it into a planar surface, then mirror the surface and convert the entities. I know it sounds like a bit more work, but because it's, it's copying, um, say, a dumb piece of geometry so to speak it's it's quite robust um, so this is how I finish off models if I've modeled a half um, yep next one model sections of the form based around axes of symmetry see this lots of times people not um, they'll try and um, model a, a freeform object say like this toaster and they'll try and draw the whole section uh, so plan view when when reality you can get away with uh, I modeled a quarter of this one and then I mirrored it over you know some asymmetric details and then you mirror it over again um, much better way to do it so again mirror bodies simple features fail for no reason we cannot add simple features so you get halfway through a model or towards the end you have to go back and add some detail and then all of a sudden you find um, that fillets might work won't won't work anymore or um, you won't be able to add a move face uh, func uh, feature or something like that then you need to go tools evaluate check I do this quite often when I'm modeling um, and see what pops up if you have invalid edges invalid faces inconsistent faces general errors chances are until you get rid of that you won't be able to get this funny one of your little features like a fillet or a move face working again um, sometimes you can get general errors etc from imported geometry in that case it shouldn't affect you adding these features but it's worth checking here's the style spline um, style spline is much easier to control and define than the old spline because you could directly constrain and dimension the control polygon you could also um, dictate what degree spline you want if you want it to be multi-span or bezier single span so yeah i use that i haven't used the old spline since style spline came out okay flat view feature tree um being a pro e x pro e user uh where the feature tree is flat when this function was added uh i haven't i haven't looked back basically so if you if you ever had a nested sketch that was nested in the feature and the sketch fell over and then SolidWorks wouldn't let you roll back to that sketch because it was it thought it was um, before another feature or something weird like that it can drive you mad so flat flat tree view everything is listed in the feature tree in the order that's modeled um, so you not you don't have any issues with things being hidden from you I recommend using it tangent edge display um, I showed someone this a while ago and they were, they, were, they were blown away their reaction so oh wow tangent yes I'd use this um, all the time if you, your tangent edge is set to phantom that way if you have an edge that's uh, with intolerance in SolidWorks to be weird tangent it will be displayed as phantom that way you get instant visual feedback that an edge may be tangent rather than not tangent and positional which is a solid line so that's in your system options. Um, iterations, versions of models. Make sure you save versions of iterations of your models as you progress. Especially if, say you've modelled something, you've sent something off at the end of the day to a client. 
um, the next day they came back with some alterations. So save off an iteration. Um, you go in to make some of those alterations and some of your existing features fall over. So you have both models open. Say in this case I've got version 5 and version 6. Um, I wouldn't have them split screen like this. But you just control tab between the two and you can scroll through the one with the feature that hasn't fallen over. And you can see what, uh, like if it lost a reference and stuff like that, you can fix it in the newer file. It's much easier than trying to guess. Okay, name your features. Um, I always name my most important features, especially sketches and control geometry. Just makes it much easier, uh, both for myself and for clients if I'm handing over a model. Changing between solid and surface bodies. So, say you've got a solid body and, and solid works, um, and it, it's quite it's got a lot of detail hang off it. So you've got right down the tree, you've got drafts, you've got fillets, etc. Uh, say you had to come along and redefine an area, and the easiest way to do that was to patch in another some surface geometry. So you get that solid body, you roll back before the fillets. Um, and you delete a face, or you, you put in a split line and delete an area that you want to replace, build some surfaces, knit them in, make it a solid again. Um, what will happen is all those features downstream suddenly can't see that original solid and they will fall over. So it's a real shame that SolidWorks doesn't, doesn't um, still see those references, which is the way I say Pro E works, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, it's just a gotcha. Read through there what I've written about. It's something to be worried about, especially if you also have drawings. If you have a solid, turn it into a surface and back into a solid again, it will lose some of its references in the drawings. Um, projected curve into a 3D sketch. So I've found in the past, I don't know if it's such a case now in new versions of SolidWorks, but um, if you had a projected curve sketch onto sketch or sketch onto face slash surface, uh, if you wanted then to reference that um, geometry, it'd struggle to select endpoints or even the actual curve to reference to. So if you insert a 3D sketch and convert the entities of the projected curve into that 3D sketch, um, SolidWorks is much happier uh, for your reference to the 3D sketch. I know it's an extra feature, but it works, so yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, fit spline. Fit spline is really handy if you have uh, multiple tangent sections in a sketch um, and to cut down on um, breaks in the sketch like if you're extruding that surface or using it in a boundary or something like that you can create a, a, a spline that's fitted through that through the um, tangent sections and you specify a tolerance replace entity uh, this was introduced I don't know 2015 or something maybe a bit earlier um, allows you to uh, reference a different uh, entity in a sketch. So say you have an arc and you decide you need a spline, you can replace the entity and theoretically anything that was referenced to the arc is now referenced to the spline, but I don't think it re-references endpoints. Uh, offset entity. If you have trouble offsetting a um, multiple entities in a sketch, uh, especially if they're edges, Sometimes helps to to create a sketch before the another sketch before the offset one, convert the entities to that sketch, and then create the offset offset the converted entities in the sketch afterwards. I know you got end up with two sketches, but it seems to work. Okay, um, if you ever tried to replace a face, say you've got a new bit of geometry to patch in, it's a boundary surface, and that boundary surface wants to replace two or more. Uh, existing surfaces or faces um, quite often it will fail so a workaround is to go insert face delete delete those multiple faces that you want to replace and use the fill function um, and that will end up replacing those multiple faces with one face then you can do run your replace face against that uh, deleted fill face um, and because there's you're replacing one surface with one surface uh, it seems to work and it doesn't really matter if the the delete fill face is lumpy because it's getting replaced. Okay, edge won't fill it. Um, this is a classic. Constant size fillet function might fall over, might not work, so you move on to try and face fillet. Face fillet's normally quite robust if that doesn't work. 
The last one I always use is using a variable fillet, but with all the dimensions the same. For some reason, it seems to work pretty much all the time. Sketch fillets. So, um, say in this case, there's um, three arcs in, in my sketch. Uh, instead of putting the fillets into the sketch, I've extruded the geometry and added the fillets afterwards. It's a much more robust uh, way to do it because you might decide you don't want that fillet later. You might want to curve it to continue it for continuous fillet. Um, so if that was in the sketch, that means you'd have to replace the the arc fillet with a spline. So more mucking around. Lots of features. Uh, I've seen someone once set up basically like as many um, curves as you can see in the picture here in a single 3D sketch. Just an absolute nightmare with all the relations and stuff if something fell over. So it's it's much better to um, break things into several um, simple sketches rather than making one massive complicated 3D sketch. Much easier to troubleshoot. Okay, and surface breaks. Um, basically, if you create primary surfaces and there's lots of breaks in the surfaces, when you trim those surfaces, say to make a corner, and then you want to run a fillet along there, you can end up with even more breaks in the surface because the breaks and like the side surface and the top surface of a box won't line up. Um, so yeah, using fit spline can help um, reduce your surface breaks. So yeah, it's worth doing. And just a few pointers about design intent. Um, what is your, my design intent as an industrial designer? Dimensions, what might change? How should I baseline my dimensions? So uh, geometry doesn't grow in the wrong direction or something if you, if you change something. References, how to should sketches, etc. reference other geometry. That's a biggie. Um, entirely depending on what you're modeling. What is the best way to build flexibility into my model? Um, so again, you know, what, what area is going to change? Um, and therefore that would dictate how you're going to dimension or maybe constrain something. Is it need, uh, intended for manufacturer? If so, you should increase uh, include draft draft angle surfaces, drafted surfaces from the beginning, because um, trying to trying to draft something later on can be a real nightmare, uh, and also um, can affect the form. Um, you know, just a subtle draft angle of a few degrees can have a drastic effect on the form, and um, when you get more more detailed modelling, draft always before fillets. Unless the fillet is a dominant feature, it's uh it's just easy. Yeah. Is it a master model? So you try and keep the, the geometry to a minimum, um, except for the geometry that is shared across several parts. Is it a concept concept model? Um, I just say using boundary surfaces with a degenerate edge. Um, don't get too hung up on trying to make everything four sided, um, because. You know, it's a concept model. If you want to take it further, you can always go back in and redefine things. Okay, thank you. Hope that was helpful. Um, I'll probably be back with the tutorial next time. Um, yeah, enjoy. Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Bye.